guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage, working on the free tee again. Uh, so in the last video, we got a huge, huge step done. I got both doors built in a weekend, which was uh, something I've been dreading and putting off for quite a while now. And it's a big weight lifted off of my shoulders to have these doors built and looking good and fitting the car pretty nicely. So what I'm going to work on today uh, it's going to be a kind of a multi-step process, so we're going to do sort of a just real quick breezing through each of the steps. But what we need to do is get these doors to open and shut and then also latch. Uh, there's going to be a, a bunch of kind of head scratching in this process. So uh, instead of trying to have the video span over a few weeks and we miss a video, I'm going to try and keep them fairly short and just show you guys kind of the steps that I'm doing to get these doors uh, so that they're opening and shutting and then also latching in the end. So I am going to be retaining the original uh, door hinges that came with the car and also the latches because I just want the car to sort of retain the uh, old tiny feel, if you will, uh, like an old hot rod. So I want to kind of keep it looking that way. So that's why I'm doing the visible kind of uh, original Model T hinges and keeping the door opening like suicide door style. Just I, I just like the way it is. It's kind of unique and it sort of looks like an old car that was built back in the day. So what I'm going to do is uh, take some of these spacers that I have put around the doors. I'm going to take them out. You can see them taped in on this side. I have some more tape on the other side. And what we're going to do is put the hinges in in the back here. There should be just about enough space because I put these 316 inch, 316 inch spacers all around the door, so there should be enough space that we can slide the hinge in in the back here, and that will get it so that we can fit it in. Uh, I already drilled and tapped the body and the box tubing that comes up uh, in the B pillar area uh, for the door hinge, so we can bolt that back in. We can slide the door in um, around the hinge, and then what I need to do is actually clamp it in place, get the door to sort of fit well again, and then. I need to uh, attach the door to the hinge. Now what I think I need to do because I can't get to the bolt holes that are fit, uh, that they need to go into the box tube and we're going to put in the door, is I think I need to tack weld the door to the hinge so that I can swing it open and access those holes to drill the holes that we need to uh, drill and tap in the box tubing that we're going to put in the, this part of the door here. Uh, it needs to be strong so I'm going to use box tubing in the front and uh, it's the top and the sides, I'm going to use box tubing because I want it to be nice and strong for the door uh, because that is the area that's hinging and latching. So that's really important in being a strong area. And of course, I can drill and tap into that. Makes my life a little easier with how I'm attaching everything. So I'm going to get the, start on the driver's side, get the door uh, kind of pulled apart, get the box tubing, cut the sides, and we'll go from there. And hopefully we'll have two doors that at least hinge open here in a little bit. Okay, so you saw I got the hinge mounted, uh, threaded the screws into the B-pillar area, and I was trying to fit the door, but the door wouldn't fit now. Uh, so I still have my spacers here in the back. Uh, what I did was I put some, uh, put the bolts in there, but what I'm finding is, and I'll get this to focus here, um, these hinges are not closing all the way. So they're supposed to close like a you know piano hinge style right here, but they're not closing all the way. So starting to look a little closer, if you look down here, 
there is actually a bow to the hinge there. It actually bows. So right in here, the piece is actually kind of um, going out like that. So I think the whole thing has a little bit of a bow to it just from, what, a hundred years or almost of, uh, of use. And that's causing the door to not fit inside of the frame with the hinge mount. So what I need to do is take that hinge and try and throw it in the vise and put it on the anvil and hammer it back flat again and get that thing to close up so that it's nice and tight and closed. Uh, squeeze together tight when everything's closed up. Uh, but nothing I didn't expect. I just never noticed it with the old floppy door on there. And now with all the tolerances being tight like they're supposed to, it doesn't fit, so back to the drawing board. Alright, so like all the projects that I do with this car, I think it's going to be quick and it's just going to flow and it doesn't always do that. So this took a little bit longer than I expected. I thought when I got these doors built and fitting the car and Clico in, I was on the home stretch. Throw some latches on and man, we're going to be moving on to the next part of the project. But there's a lot more involved in getting these hinges to fit my new door as we showed you guys. I had to rebend and flatten these hinges to even begin to get the door to fit, and then from there I had to tweak things and adjust the door openings and all that. Got it pretty good. The driver's side is, is uh, fitting actually a little bit better than this side uh, as far as the gap goes. Uh, but on both sides I had to open up the gap at the bottom just a little bit because the hinge was just a little thicker than the 3 sixteenths that we set it out in the beginning. Uh, we can adjust that as I get closer to doing some of the bodywork stuff. But what we have is two doors that open and shut on their own with the original hinges that came with the car. That's a win. So as you can see, opens and shuts 
really nice. Uh, it's still a little floppy, so I still have to kind of hold the door here at the bottom to get it to fit in, because uh, the door does have a little flex to it without having all the bracing in it. But other than being just a tad tight right at the top, which I can open up, uh, the door holds itself shut. It's not any, under any major stress. That's a big thing that I want to kind of mention is as you're building these parts, you don't want to have to you know, force it into place with Clecos. As I was kind of getting the door to fit with the hinges, I was tweaking it a little bit, getting it in the right arrangement so it kind of fit and flowed without major stress. I want to be able to latch these doors and they're not tweaked or twisted. So that's really good. I'm just going to open up the gap a little bit here, which is something I can do later on in the project. So that's all I got for this one. I appreciate you guys following along this build and all of our other builds. If you want to follow my day-to-day -day of what I have going on in the shop, I do a lot more than what we post in videos. Follow me on Instagram at Iron Trap. We also have information about our new t-shirts and stickers. If you'd like to grab one of those, you can definitely uh, click on there and send us a PayPal for a t-shirt. Uh, but all I ask is for you guys to comment, like, share, and let other guys know that if, if you like what we're doing here, definitely give it a share and pass it around. I really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Catch you later.